Hey guys, it's the end of February. We are into March, thank goodness. I have to say, I think everybody in the family is kind of happy to be able to eat some of that stuff out of the pantry now that we've been looking at all February. But this was an amazing challenge. And as you saw a few days ago, I posted last year's results from the $50 February and how we did. And really, it is surprising how similar our battles, I guess you could call it, were this year with grains, dairy, all those sorts of things. I'm ending off with the same box that we started at the beginning of the month. We laid this all out, we gave it a value, and that's how we started $50 February. And that was the difference this year compared to last year. Last year for $50 February, we kind of went in blind. We didn't know what to expect. And I'll be honest, we really had no track record of what we really consumed. We just were those stockpilers. Just keep the pantry full. That's how we roll. And we always had tracked how much we spent on groceries, but never exactly trying to figure out how much we were eating and where we could maybe make improvements. And that's where we changed this year. And in comes my list. This list, we started off with a lot of things that I knew we weren't going to go without throughout the month and we've added to it since. And that's where we kind of have slipped a little bit. And I will go through some numbers at the end, but I wanna kind of regale you here with a few more meals and things that we got eating for the last week of February before we wrapped all this up. And by the end of February, we were struggling a little bit to get creative, I will say that. I will admit, I did add uh, to our shopping list downstairs, a pack of uh, the chow mein noodles for our uh, chow mein the other day. So that was $1.25 because we managed to pick those up at Dollar Tree like a year and a bit ago <laughs> when it was still $1.25, not $1.50. And uh, anyway, so we still have half of those, which we're going to finish off later this week because our next round of bean sprouts is just about ready. But tonight I had planned to make lamb chops with that same mixture of the... Uh, the the potatoes the squash and the rutabagas we really really love that mashed up mixture with that bit of horseradish but to be honest it's gotten late we were doing chores and things outside and i don't feel like making it now so we're going super simple today we're making chili so all it is is a bunch of jars out of the pantry bung it in a pot and we're good to go one thing that i am adding to it is baked beans these are some baked beans i made they still smell really good. Uh, I don't actually know when, and I never date anything that goes into the freezer, but I made them a few months ago and they've been in the freezer for a while. So I'm gonna put them into the chili as well because why not? I like that and we need to use them up. So we're gonna just make up our chili. We're using an August stew, uh, some canned beans from the garden, a chili sauce and our chili meat. And then we're going to add these baked beans. Oh yeah, and another thing that I forgot to mention, the yellow, summer squash that we grated up to make uh, summer squash bread. Got some of that out. That's why I was in the freezer in the first place and found the baked beans. So we're going to be making some squash bread so that the kids have that for lunches instead of raiding cookies or things like that. So we're gonna be using our whole wheat flour and the chocolate chips that we've taken out and a few other little tidbits. But squash was from the garden and basically we're able to make this without having to take anything else out of the pantry. Love the sound of the pops. That one didn't pop as much, but it was still very sealed. So I'm putting in the meat and the August stew. Then I'm gonna rinse my beans to get them in. And uh, I guess I don't need to rinse the baked beans, so I'll put them in first, and then I will rinse the kidney beans, and we'll be good to go. So it's smelling amazing. We've grated a little bit being sparingly, of course, but a little bit of our cheddar cheese on top. And I'm actually going to test out my homemade sour cream. I will admit I'm a little bit nervous. I tried it as it is and I don't love it, but I think I need to tweak it a little bit. So first time, gonna go with it anyways, but I'd like to learn a little bit better. But you can see it's quite a nice consistency anyways. I did have to add more milk because as you remember those solid chunks of cream, it went pretty solid. So we're gonna put a dollop on top and hopefully we're going to enjoy it. Okay, so my sour cream is kind of melting like butter would. So I'm not sure that I did this right, but I'm gonna give it a taste test anyways, just so that uh, I can give an honest opinion. But really it is melting like butter. 
Maybe it was basically butter. That's too hot. Wow. It tastes fine. I'm not sure if it tastes like butter or sour cream though. Hmm. It's actually quite good on it though. So I suppose it's a win, but I do want to do a little bit more uh, research and potentially tweaking this to maybe be a little more proper, but I'm going to enjoy it tonight. All right. So we've enjoyed our dinner and now we're going to get on with making our yellow squash bread. Uh, I'd already kind of started putting some ingredients in here. Basically what I have so far is a half a cup of applesauce, a half a cup of butter, which I actually mixed it with vegetable oil because I'm running low on butter and vegetable oil was a freebie for the uh, challenge. But normally I would probably do it all butter and splurge. And then one cup of brown sugar, which you saw us open the other day for the challenge. So I'm going to get this all blended up with my, uh, it's not blended, but what do you call that thing? Mixed. Mixer. mixer. I'm going to use my mixer, get this all mixed up. And then we're going to be adding our flour and all the dry ingredients. And uh, we're actually going to grind up some of our own grown millet to go into this uh, in with our whole wheat flour. All right. So this summer, or this past summer, we grew millet and uh, really surprised with it. And you can see we've, we've used a little bit, but uh, that's what we produced. Definitely promised to up that next year. But for this recipe, we're going to take a half cup of millet and we're going to grind it in this Victorio hand mill. And uh, this does a pretty good job of it. So get them in there nice and easy. It's very, very simple to grind millet. This little mill actually works really well for these smaller grains. All right, so now we've added our eggs to those wet ingredients that we'd already started to blend up. And one thing I wanted to just show here quickly is we're going through the February challenge and talking about putting away stuff earlier in the year so that you'd have it for when times are a little leaner. I just opened our eggs. They're from November 15th. So that's how we work. We store our eggs in the fridge and we just date them as we go. So I have all the eggs still from November 15th on, although there were some lean times in there. But it is kind of interesting to see that eggs do keep for a very, very long time. And if you can stockpile them, you really can get through those times when your chickens need a break and just need to uh, not lay for a little while. And but those are silky eggs. I was about to show that. And for those that don't know, if you don't follow us on Hickory Croft Farm, we actually raise silky chickens and use silky eggs. So these eggs are a lot smaller. Well, not a lot smaller, but they're a bit smaller than your regular eggs. So this recipe calls for three regular eggs. So we used five silky eggs. After weighing them, we found that three silky eggs makes two regular eggs. So we're kind of going to go with five. I don't know. All of the recipes, it's a little bit of tweaking to figure out how to use these baby eggs, but I just wanted to share that. All right, so for this recipe, we need three cups of flour. So we are starting off with our millet, fresh ground flour, and uh, now we've got a half cup of that. So we're gonna top this up with our whole wheat flour. All right, so we have our three cups of flour product. So we're gonna put that in. Then we need three teaspoons of baking powder. Baking powder was one of the free ingredients. I'm going with a half teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Now, one of the things that I have to admit, I am not strictly counting are things like spices. I buy these bags of spices at $1.50 to $1.99 for a big bag. I'm going through pennies really in the, in the grand scheme of things here. So I'm not really measuring out and factoring that in. Uh, I could put a little bit of a couple dollars at the end of the month that would go for all those little spice things. And then the only other thing that we need to get in here is our two cups of summer squash. So I'm not gonna put this in until I get the flour and dry ingredients all kind of mixed into the wet. And then you just wanna gently fold this in. We're gonna add chocolate chips, of course, and get it into our baking dishes. So 
we'll see how this turns out when it comes out of the oven. All right, guys, well, we are well underway here in February. We're almost into the last week now, and I have to say, thank goodness. Uh, this has been tough going this last week, and we even allowed ourselves a little treat. Let me show you. We bought some of the flour to make tortillas. Now, yes, we could make flour tortillas, but we're trying to watch that flour consumption and, uh, or, or wheat consumption, I should say. So we've tried these. I've added the $8 to the list. We're not going to use this whole container. So at the end of the month, we will subtract whatever portion we did not use. But we were kind of to that point. We want to do a little treat. And I have an amazing recipe that uh, a friend gave me that uses chicken and curry and wraps. And it is just mm, delicious. And anyways, so we cooked our chicken on the fireplace today. All day it's been slow cooking and it looks amazing. It's just fall apart, kind of like pulled chicken. And James doesn't want to be on camera today, but James is making us some awesome called dirty wedges out of his uh, cookbook that he got at Christmas time. So we're going to enjoy wedges and chicken salad wraps. They're, it's like a curry chicken salad. Um, so we're going to enjoy that tonight for dinner. Uh, oh, and the other thing too, I forgot to mention is this will be the first time I'm going to be making mayo from scratch. So I did, we actually have been pretty good. We haven't used any mayo really for the month of February because we haven't splurged on any kind of treat things or bread things or any of that sort of stuff. So today is our first day with these wraps and making this chicken salad. I want mayo, so I'm trying out making homemade mayo. So we're going to see how that works as well. All right. So first attempt at making mayo, I will admit I'm not loving it. Maybe it's just the recipe I chose. If anybody has a recipe that they love, please leave a link to it down below or a description. Uh, it just has, I don't know. It just doesn't taste good. <laughs> now in all fairness, I used olive oil because that's all we have. And uh, it did say olive oil is not the best oil to make it because it has quite the flavor. But um, either way, this was supposed to go into my chicken salad and I'm not sure it's gonna go in there because uh, I think it'll change the taste too much. But at least I can say I tried, right? Um, part of it I think is the Dijon mustard maybe. I don't love that in there. Um, anyways. I tried making mayo. It actually did turn out. It's good and thick. Uh, I was super impressed with the consistency, but not loving the taste. So learning curve. Maybe we'll try something else if somebody has a recommendation for one that they like. Um, but this one was, uh, it was a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, tablespoon of Dijon mustard, uh, a large egg, a little bit of salt, and then uh, three quarters of a cup of olive oil. And uh, yeah. Not thrilled. <laughs> so maybe we're gonna be opening a store-bought mayo after all, just to make these wraps. <laughs> And a typical breakfast as we round out February. This is what we've been consuming a lot. Potatoes, lamb sausages, and eggs. The chickens are in full production. Yum. So we are making some squash flour or dehydrated squash, it's basically squash powder. We have a couple videos on sort of the whole process using Canada Crookneck squash and our green striped Kershaw squash. Today we're using Canada Crookneck because we've noticed a few of them are just starting to get to that point where they're not gonna keep a lot longer. So we're actually kind of mid process here. We've kind of done our first batch in the steamer. We're getting that on into the dehydrator and we've got a second batch because our little steamer basically if we do it twice that's what fills the dehydrator so uh anyways we're going to keep going with this well guys we are in the full swing of it we are rounding out getting so close to the end of february and i won't lie i'm looking forward to march 1st and being able to eat some of that stuff in the pantry that we've been avoiding all february but at the end of the video we'll talk a little bit more about that but today we're going full swing it's actually tonight as you can tell it's dark out <laughs> I like to work best, you know, at late at night and take on a lot of projects. But anyways, we're about to make some red Thai curry for supper with rabbit meat. Mm. I don't know if anybody remembers back. I don't know if it was a freezer challenge video or if it was a pantry challenge video, but I talked about, it must've been a freezer challenge or something. Cause we went out for lunch 
and we went to this uh, curry place. What's it called? De Golden Demerai in Kingston. And uh, I had this red Thai curry soup with sweet potatoes and it was so delicious. And I said, it would be awesome if I could find a recipe and make it. Well, I went ahead, I looked up a recipe and here we go. We are going to be making it tonight. I'm super excited. I've already taken out a container of our homemade red uh, Thai curry paste uh, to use in this. And for the most part, besides the rice, this is pretty much a home cooked meal with stuff that we had. This isn't really making a dent in uh, what we've budgeted for February, so that's good. But dinner's not the only thing on the agenda. I also promised James that this weekend I would make a couple quiches because he loves to have quiche for breakfast and it's super simple before school when we've got it kind of got to be moving in a quick hurry. So I'm going to make four quiches so that we have them for the remainder of February. And we're also going to be making some of our summer yellow squash. How do you say it? It's yellow crookneck squash. <laughs> and we're also going to be making some of our yellow crookneck summer squash bread. So stay tuned. We're going to have a lot going on today, but for the most part, we are using what we already had budgeted. You saw earlier, Chris ground up our millet and sorghum and curl dock here so that we had some of that. We're still gonna be using our whole wheat flour, but it does save us a little bit out of that bag. So hopefully we're going to get two things made at once here, the quiches and dinner. Now, the one thing I'm going to say is, unfortunately, quiche is not quiche without cheese. And we've already used our two allocated blocks of cheese for February, so I am adding a fourth cheese to the list. That's one thing that's been really interesting about this $50 February, is going in and trying to eat as normal as possible. It's surprising the shortfalls I had in what I thought we were going to use. But we're still going to use this cheese in our quiche because... The quiche is pretty much made with all our own stuff otherwise. For meat in the quiche, we are using our lamb breakfast sausages. I'm just going to cook up the patties and rip them up into each tray. I do a crustless quiche, so that's kind of nice as well. It has a little bit of flour in when I stir it up, but we'll uh, talk about that when I get there. So with our red Thai curry, we need to have rice, obviously. So I've got two cups of rice in here. And I've mixed that half and half with uh, chicken broth and water. So I've got two cups chicken broth and two cups of water. We like to use up that broth. It gives it extra nutrition and flavor to our rice. So to make this curry, we're going to start off with some of our goose lard in the wok. We'll start with our onions and four cloves of garlic. We're going to put that in. We're going to kind of saute it a little bit. Now remember, we're using rabbit meat for this, which is already cooked. So we don't need to cook our meat. But if you were going to be putting in raw meat, you should probably do it around now too. And then the next thing that's going in there will be a mixture of our veggies. We have two cups of sliced eggplant already frozen. Can you see the peas? Mm -hmm. Some of our snap peas that we put in from the garden and also a whole bunch of our red peppers that we'd frozen. So that works out perfect. Basically comes out to about four cups worth of veggies and one cup of our noodle beans. So that's really all the bulk that's gonna be in this. And then we have a bunch of stuff that goes in as our sauce. So we'll talk about that when we get there. So the soup that we had at the restaurant was sweet potato. And I don't have any sweet potatoes, so we're using our Canada Crookneck squash, very similar to a butternut squash. It's quite sweet tasting, but the one thing about it is it cooks very, very quickly. So we're basically going to have it pretty much ready to go. We're going to dice this up into little cubes, and then we're going to throw it in at the end when we add the meat. So now that we have the squash all cut up and everything ready for our sauce, we still got some cook time. So I'm going to work on those quiche, and the first thing I'm going to do is take some of these old butter wrappers and we're going to grease our pans and put a little dusting of flour in them, whole wheat flour, and uh, then we'll just start putting all our toppings in them. That's how I work. There is no crust. I'm going to just put in our lamb sausage, onions, peppers, and probably a little bit of lamb's quarters and maybe some garlic. I don't know. We'll see where uh, the fancy takes me. And now our two sausages patties being broke up in each one. The one thing that's really nice about uh, making the quiches with these sausage patties is we would normally eat the eight sausage patties in one meal and I'm now making those eight go for four meals with these quiches. So we usually 
cook up a quiche for us for four and split it in quarters kind of thing. So this is a perfect way to stretch that bit of meat. So now that our veggies there are pretty much cooked through, we're gonna add our meat. I'm trying to make this last for school lunches this week as well. So I've got a pretty big batch we are making. And the other part that we're going to add now that I'd already talked about was our squash because we don't want this to get too overcooked and soggy because that just makes it horrible. And then we're going to stir it around and we're going to put the lid on and let that simmer for a little while. All right, so we cut a chunk off of our cheese, probably about 300 grams. And we've cut them into four blocks around 75 grams now. Now, one thing I will say is I would usually use more than this for cheese in my quiche. But because we're on $50 February and I don't want to use all of the cheese and have to budget another one, we're limiting, we're rationing. That's what we're doing. We're living in rationing times. So we are going to be using the 75 grams per quiche, but probably normally I would be at least double that. All right, so we still haven't eaten dinner yet, but we're now making the egg mixture to pour over everything in our quiches. Now, as you know, we raise silky chickens, we use silky eggs. So this takes seven silky eggs. It would be four large eggs if you were buying them from the grocery store or had a chicken that laid large eggs. So I've already got six in. There's my seventh. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of black pepper, about a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, that might have been a little bit more. And then I just do a random handful of parsley that we dehydrated from the garden this year. One tablespoon of, it would be butter, but because we're in the $50 February, I don't want to use all my butter. So I'm using our goose lard that we stored. And a half a cup of whole wheat flour. I basically give that a good whisk to kind of get it all almost paste-like, I guess. And then next, you need a cup and a half of milk. Now again, look at that cream falling out of there. Because I'm in $50 February and it's almost the end of the month and I don't want to buy more milk. Oven's ready. I'm actually using one cup of milk and a half a cup of water. And then we just whisk that up and then we're going to pour it on top. And we even decided to put some of our dehydrated yellow pear tomatoes on a couple of them. So now basically all that's left is for these to go into the oven at 350 and they're going to bake for about 45 minutes. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but you want them to really, really puff up and then they kind of collapse down after you take them out of the heat. So that's our next step. All right, so now that our quiche is in the oven, it's time to make that red Thai curry sauce for our... Uh, I don't know what you want to call it. It's not a stir fry. It's not a soup. It's, it's a curry, I guess. So first thing we're going to need to do here is we're going to put in our chicken broth. You need two cups of chicken broth. This is actually a little bit less, so I might find that I need to add a bit more liquid at the end. But that's where we're going to start. All right, there's our homemade red curry paste. You want three tablespoons if you were buying the store-bought stuff or using homemade. It smells amazing. I can't wait. I'm so hungry. One tablespoon of fish sauce, two tablespoons lime juice. So another thing that I'm kind of changing in this recipe is it actually calls for two medium tomatoes, fresh tomatoes. Now this time of year, I don't have fresh tomatoes. I could use canned diced tomatoes, but I don't really want to tap into those either. So I'm actually going to just use tomato paste. I'm probably going to put about a quarter cup in here. We'll just see. I'm going to have to probably tweak it to taste because I really don't know until I try it as to whether it's right. But we're going to put a quarter cup in to start and then kind of go from there. And basically your last ingredient at this point is a can of coconut milk. Yes, we budgeted it. It's a treat. And you know what? This is going to fulfill a whole bunch of lunch meals and things like that for this last week of February. So that will be everything in our sauce. All right, so we're going to give it a try, just so I know if I need to add anything else in. The one thing I'm going to say is it doesn't look as pretty as what I got in the restaurant, but we were, in all fairness, using frozen goods. The eggplant doesn't have the nice, pretty purple skin. I use noodle beans instead of green beans, so it's kind of lacking a little bit in its lustrous appeal. But it smells amazing, so it's not quite warm yet because I've only just mixed this up, but... Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, this could be my new favorite thing. My new favorite thing. 
Wow, that's good. All right, so we're gonna get this heated through. We're gonna add some rice to it and we're gonna enjoy. All right, so we just finished having our dinner. It was delicious, although I have to admit, I did add a little extra salt to my personal dish. It just didn't have enough for me, but the flavor, if everything else was wonderful and we have a lot left over, I mean, a lot. <laughs> so that's great because that'll serve for some lunches for everybody for the next few days. So now we're on to making that squash bread and I'm not gonna bore you with too much of the details. I've made this before. All right, so now that my kitchen is in full shambles, there is stuff everywhere. I am terrible when it comes to cooking a whole bunch of different things because it just seems to build up and build up and build up. But we have these ready to go. But first we need to take those quiche out of the oven. So let's take a look because they smell incredible. Look at these beauties. Yum. You can see those sun-dried tomatoes on those ones. Looking forward to breakfast tomorrow. All right, so I know we haven't filmed a lot of food-oriented stuff this last two weeks of February, but the one thing I am gonna say is I'm coming back to my mayo, which I told you was horrible. It's amazing on certain things. This is wonderful on our lamb burgers, and that's what we're having tonight on our cloud bread. So we're using up that cheese out of the freezer as well as all the eggs because the chickens are producing eggs like crazy. So we're gonna go and enjoy some lamb burgers and the kids are gonna take them for lunch tomorrow. Well guys, it is 6.30 in the morning, 29th of February, final day of $50 February. And this morning, it's just me and I'm making breakfast sandwiches. I'm going to be using our leftover cloud bread from uh, last night's dinner. And I'm using lettuce from our inside garden. Finally, it actually probably was ready to harvest two days ago, but we didn't have anything we were making to use lettuce. So I need to harvest some today, so I'm gonna put some on my sandwiches. But all in all, February has been an incredible month. It's been quite the challenge, and we're gonna go through a lot of the details here shortly. I really don't look awake yet. This is early for me. But, mmm, yum. So what you really want to know is how much we spent, right? I mean, that's the big question. Did we make the $150 budget? Well, I'm gonna tell you, we haven't figured that out yet, but by the end of the video, we will know. But what I can tell you is, so far on my list, I have $191.64. But, but, we didn't consume all of that. We still have tons of product that we didn't use, that we budgeted. So the next step now is for me to take all of those bags weigh them because they all started as brand new bags and find out what percentage we used and calculate just how much we ate in a dollar value. And then I'll bring you back with our final numbers. I'm really, really, really hoping because I'll be honest, there's a lot still left in this box. So maybe, just maybe we did make it. I'm, I'm really curious to see the answer. So we're gonna go with the biggest one that I think is gonna make a price difference. It's like I'm on the prices right or something, you know, like give me your guess, come on, don't go over. The corn flour, this was $7.99. We only ate one meal out of it. So we really only used two cups of it. It was 1.8 kg, 1.44. So we'll edit this part out because this is me taking a while. Where's my calculator? Handy dandy calculator. Okay, so we had 1.44. We're gonna divide that by 1.8. That was the original package. And that equals 0.8. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've used these kind of math skills. If somebody tells you when you're in school that you'll never need your math skills, you're going to need your math skills. So I'm pretty sure that means that we still have 80% of the bag remaining. I'm going to just double check that with the 1.8. <laughs> this is horrible. Times by 0.8 is 1.44. Yeah. So we only use 20% of that bag. So if that was $7.99 times that by the 0.2. That means it was only $1.60 of the $7.99 we need to budget. So now I'm gonna go and adjust all my things on my list for what was left to what we actually used. And we're gonna come back with the final numbers on just how much we actually consumed. Not just what we bought, but how much we consumed. And I will say one thing, other than this corn flour, 
We actually didn't buy anything in this box. It all came from the pantry. It was stuff that we'd originally stockpiled. Obviously we bought it at one point in time, but it was all downstairs to be part of the pantry challenge anyways. So let's figure out the numbers. All right, so I've gone through exhausting my brain on all these math uh, equations and I've come up with the final number. We didn't make it and I can make excuses and I can kind of tweak the numbers and get pretty darn close, but I'm just gonna give you the breakdown here. Basically, when I removed all the stuff that we didn't use, we were still at $171.23. But there is a breakdown to that that I am going to justify. I budgeted $15 for all those little things like soy sauce, spices. I used the hosin sauce a couple times for the chow mein. We use sugar in our coffee, so we had a little bit of cane sugar here and there. Uh, mostly we use them because we weren't using anything else to stay within a cheaper budget for $50 February because we do buy our honey. But if I took out that $15, we were $156.23, which to be honest, for a family of four, being pretty darn close to budget, I think is pretty good. And of that, $99 was dairy. So that's your cheese, butter, milk, all those sorts of things. So really, our budget is hugely eaten up by dairy, but what we did discover after the changes we made from last year we didn't spend anything really it was negligible what we spent on grain products and part of that was because we grew a lot more of the grains ourselves with our millet and sorghum which helped us a lot with pancakes and things like that that we wanted to treat ourselves but mostly the big change was in our diet with not eating bread i bought one loaf of bread for the kids for lunches when i didn't have hot lunches and i didn't make bread once i made uh hamburger buns for one of our meals and otherwise we ate cloud bread which was great because that did help use some of that cheese out of the freezer that we needed to get used up so and the eggs because the chickens are producing eggs like mad i mean you saw us all february eggs were a big staple same as last year but all in all i am not unsatisfied with these numbers i am so pleased with the changes we made and even with the changes of the prices at the grocery store we were still able to come pretty darn close to budget and I think that's pretty awesome. So definitely stay tuned as we move forward in March with some scratch cooking and homemade meals and really start enjoying all the things that are in our pantry instead of trying to pigeonhole ourselves into what we could do for the cheapest.